Hi, it's me. I'm in my Wednesday morning office. Um, I'm in under the rose arch. Let's get back at it. I want to keep doing this because this is one of my favourites and one of my prettiest gardens that I do. And I've been here for probably 17 years. I built the wall on the front, um, on the front, on the roadside. Um, I had a friend of mine, Rex, who came and helped me build it, or he pretty much built it, built it, and I helped him build it. Um, and we had to rebuild the Flintstone wall that fell down on the front, on the edge of the road there. Anyway, I want to keep bringing you back here because I can show you what I get to enjoy all of the time. Well, all of the time, every Wednesday morning office. So here we go. Um, as I say, I'm in the rose arch, and this is the rose on the arch, or one of them. There's actually one, two underneath, uh, three there, and then four and five down the bottom. Five and you one down over here. And on the other side, there's this weird hedging thing that has a slight scent, and it has a white flower. And then this that looks like it's died back is actually jasmine and there's absolutely tons of it. And that also has a white flower with a, that's scented. And then next to it, there's a honeysuckle. And then next to that, there's a camellia. And there's also another, like a dog rose that has a little flower on. Oh, that's quite pretty. Um, the camellias are all going over. We had lots of rain recently, as everybody probably knows. And so it, it puts, it, it hits the flowers and it actually, when the sun shines on the flower, it kind of dries the petals out and they go brown quicker. Um, but the bees have been pollinating, busy pollinating, and there's still more buds coming up. Um, but the bees have been busy pollinating, and so there will be some seeds on here as well uh, later on. Underneath I've got a load of um, agapanthus. There's a little um, azalea there. There's this thing that I never remember the name of, but it has a, it's like a sweet pea flower. There's a hebe at the back, and there's a, like a little dog rose there. It's little, it's huge, it comes up to the top of the hedge. Um, there's loads of this, there's a load of, um, all these are aquilegias, aren't they beautiful? And there's loads of them as we go around the garden, I'll show you. Um, there's also a lot of bluebells, a lot of that white garlic, and when it crosses, you come up with a, a mauve or a slightly purpley um, bluebell. Uh, this is a rhododendron. I planted it years ago. And last year it had one little bud on, it's got really big. You can see there's holes in the leaves and this is called by a, caused by a beetle called a vine weevil. Um, it eats, eats the plant, eats the leaves, but it also will eat uh, the roots of the plant a bit. And you can treat it with different things. Um, there's a bird bath here and the birds love it. Um, as we go around, there's this one here. This is a, it's like a hydrangea, but it's a climbing one, and it's actually sort of tucked in the hedge. There's more hebes as we get to the gate. Down here, we'll go on the other side. Down here, this is Lily of the Valley, and the scent of it is amazing. It's just so beautiful. If you don't know what it's like, find some, um, buy some, whatever. If it's growing in another person's garden, get some. Pick yourself a few bits and just have a good sniff in because it's a wonderful, wonderful plant. This one's an azalea um, and there's another azalea just here. These are all foxgloves coming up through. I've got to weed through here yet. I'm weeding at this very moment. So there's a big azalea here, a pink one and a red one. And there's another sort of pinkish one there. Um, there's a load of Osteospirone, and this is the hardy Osteospirone, which is a like an African sun daisy. And you can look, you can see all the buds on my rose. Look, I trimmed it back, but it's massive, really. And I'll bring you along when it's open. It's a nice purple one with a yellow centre. Um, there's all this. This one here is a, like a type of crane's bill, and it smells a bit like wet, old wet cloths, but it has a very, very pretty flower. I mean, look, it's got this lovely, lovely long stamen. And it is pink with these lovely yellow tops. There's a lot of forget-me-nots left because um, they're going over, and as they go over, I'll pull them out and new things come up underneath them. Lots of foxgloves. This here is um, evening primrose. You'll notice that all the things that are in my field are also in my gardens. I say my gardens, they're someone else's a customer's gardens, but they're my gardens because I'm here every week to do them. Lots of aquilegias, osteospirin, and um, these ones are, uh, what are they? Marigolds. 
and the marigolds they flower all the way through the year right up to Christmas as well there's just loads of stuff these little little pink beautiful beautiful flowers aren't they absolutely gorgeous these are pinks or carnations can't remember which one I think they're pinks um, the difference between the pink and the carnation is that carnation tends to just have a, a roundish edge to the petal whereas a pink has a, a crimped edge to the petal and that's why they're called pinks and it's to do with the pinking shears that they used to cut fabric with and that's why they call them pinks um, pinks tend to be slightly scented I think this is the right way around, can't remember um, whereas uh, carnations aren't or maybe I'm wrong and it's the wrong way around more accurately, it's just, just look, uh, isn't it gorgeous? These ones here, they're not flowering at the minute, but they will come into flower and they're gazanias and they have a big bright yellow flower. I'm just going to take you for a quick wander around. This one, this pink one down here, that's another crane's bill. And it'll grow and it'll bush out and I have to trim it back and then it'll reflower again. Big hebe here. Um, and that will have a little flower on it as well. I'll just go around here now. Acrylesias. A lot of things are repeated, but it doesn't matter. Um, it just makes for a beautiful garden that flowers all the year round. There are roses in here as well. Um, and over it, we'll just step in, step over. Um, Euphorbia, that's that one. The bumblebee. Let's see if we can get right close. Oh, it's gone round. I, I'm looking into, I've got the sun in behind me, so it's kind of hard to see. But... Yeah, bumblebees are loving the aquilegias, another one down there, absolutely gorgeous. Um, the big clump at the back, that's marguerites, they'll flower later in the summer. Uh, end of the summer, uh, end of, sort of August, September, little rows down here, there's some capital of leaves, there's, some, there's an echium at the back there. Um, I think it's white tail, that one, I've got it in the field as well. Um, and there's this, which is an ornamental plum. And there's a rowan tree. We put the rowan tree in to replace the ornamental plum. And the ornamental plum has a root there that's got a big hole in it. And it goes down about four or five foot full of all the rocks in the garden. Um, we took it down a few years ago. It was massive. It filled this whole area here. Um, and we took it down a few years ago because it was rotten inside. It had a hollowed trunk, which we took away. And I think I've only last year burned it on my uh, wood burner. Um, we do have... A, like a veggie patch here and it's just fruit so it's gooseberries on the front I've got three or four gooseberry bushes this is a red currant here and then there's a black currant or two black currants next to it and then raspberries at the back and I've just left <laughs> I like the aquilegias they sell seeds so easily so it's aquilegias and forget-me-nots here and there's again there's a, a marigold there as well um, I just wanted to show you because it's, it, it's something to share, isn't it? You've got to share loveliness. <laughs> this is lovely, so I'm sharing it with you guys. And as the spring, summer, the year progresses, it changes as it goes through. Along here there was a, um, a lavender, and I've had to, it died, so I took it out and I've replaced it. We've got lots of hydrangeas here, and they've got lots of buds coming on them all the way through. I cut them back quite well, um, although they're quite big still. I did cut them back quite well. In the back there, I just want to show you that. That's my chicken orchid, and when it flowers, it's got the it's one of my favourite scents, and it smells like a cross between suntan lotion and clean washing. Really nice. This one here has got little flowers on. I, I grow it because it's got a nice leaf, and it's more for the foliage. Um, but it's uh, it's it's beautiful. It's got a beautiful flower. Lots of poppies. Those Californian poppies. Loads of bluebells. I'm not sure if they're. 100% English bluebells because they're very very tall. There's some of those white bells that I've left in a bit here for now and as they go over I shall dig them out. It's just an endless task. I did have or I might have wild gar a wild onion in here as well but I've got rid of the majority. This is another crane's bell which is um, like a type of geranium. I'm just going to take you in for a very close look because isn't that beautiful? It's the little tiny pink veins on it that are so gorgeous. And there's a, a purpley one as well. I've got quite a few different varieties of cranes bill in this garden, along with in lots of gardens. There's a hebe there as well, uh, like a silvery white one there. And there's a hydrangea behind. And in the down there, there's more hydrangeas. There's a, a couple of uh, Ygelias, a dark one and a, a light a variegated. 
lavateria and a new lavender. Um, marguerites on the corner again. And then over here is Californian poppies. They're actually um, chrysanthemums, the two clumps there, one there and one at the back. Um, and then I've got a few hellebores at the back there. Uh, in this one, there's another crane, but there's two here, uh, which again, type of geranium. We'll go in for a quick close look, look. Aren't they pretty? There's a big, uh, whilst we're here, there's a, is, is he there? Yeah, he's there, there's a nice beetle there. A strange looking beetle, pretty. Um, lovely flowers again. I like these because they've got that, look at the, where are we? Where am I shining it on? There we go. It's kind of, it's got a pretty pattern on it. And again, a crane's bill again. This one's a lighter pink one. Beautiful. Um, this is actually a bit dead and I'll chop it back, but underneath it's growing through again and it's a penstone. Um, they grow ever so well in here. Um, if you, I've got them around the pond. If you want to grow penstones, just snap a piece off like that. I just don't want to do it in my knees. There we go. Snap a piece off. Clear the bottom out. Push it in the ground, it's a bit too much for the top on there. So, chop the top off. And that's a new plant, and it'll grow. Most things grow. There's a fuchsia there, but it's the old fashioned single teardrop one. Um, loads of mallows, marshmallow mallows, and they've got flowers on now. The flowers are underneath there, look, isn't that pretty as well? That's a mallow. Um, and there's loads of stuff, there's all this. It's like a purple stock, beautiful. Um, and then we're back to around the pond again. And I, I just wanted to bring you along my Wednesday office garden. Beautiful. Cheers, hope everyone's well. Oh, before we go, I'm not gonna go quick though. Let me just say this. There is a tree peony. You see that? Beautiful yellow flower. It's massive this. I had to chop it back last year because it fell over and it was all going a bit weird. So this is a tree peony and I've moved them around the garden. There's a seed above that one there. Um, and the other one is, I just wanted to show you, that one there's a kiwi fruit. And again, I had to chop that right back because it fell over and it grew through the roof of the garage. And there's a lavateria down next to it. Anyway, that's the end of that little bit of my Wednesday morning tour of my Wednesday office. Hope everyone's well, cheers.